Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the first of 15 videos in a new series that I've put together. It's to celebrate my first full year of a YouTube channel that focuses on Swift and SwiftUI app development. In this series, we're going to be building an app from scratch, and I'm going to try to follow best practices. I've spent a year creating videos on individual concepts in Swift and SwiftUI, and this is the first time I'm going to put it all together and build a mobile weather app. As the videos are going to be released over three weeks, I'll ask you to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications when they're released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. The app that we're going to be building is a weather app using the Open Weather Map API. You can enter the name of any location in the world and get a seven day weather forecast. And each time you launch the app, the last day entered is stored in user defaults. So when you launch, you get the current forecast for that city immediately. You can also switch between imperial and metric units. Though this may not seem like a particularly complicated app, there are lots of concepts to cover. I take nothing for granted and I'll reference other videos on my channel that can help you refresh and review if you find one of the topics a little difficult to understand. I've divided the series into 15 different videos over two parts. As I said, they're being released over a period of three weeks, and a summary of each video will be on the course page on my website, and I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're watching the video after February 18th, 2021, all the videos have been released. The entire first part will be released in the first week, and it focuses on the Open Weather Map API, and we secure an API key and then use a playground to build a model for our data and create a service class that we'll be able to use in our application and in future applications. During the second week, we build the app using the MVVM design pattern. Swift lends itself to this pattern, and it seems to be the current pattern of choice for a large majority of Swift UI developers. In the third week, we'll finish the app and then go back and fill in some missing pieces to make sure that the user experience is optimal and we'll catch some potential bugs. We'll finish by taking a look at how we can use the new combined framework to replace our API networking service class. I encourage you to leave a comment and let me know what you think as you progress through this series.